Welcome to Tungal Online Classes. Today we are going to discuss the new concept that is some natural phenomena of the light. So in some natural phenomena of the light, which type of phenomena we have to observe in our daily life means the first one is the spectrum of the light. So what is the first natural phenomena? What is the first natural phenomena that what we observed in our daily life with the help of the light means what? Spectrum of the light. So how you will get the spectrum of the light and what is the meaning of the spectrum of the light? The spectrum of the light is a nothing but a collection of different colors, a collection of different colors or simply we are calling as a what? The colored band is a nothing but a spectra of the light. A color band is a nothing but what? Spectra of the light. And when we will get this spectrum of the light means already we discuss in the, con in the concept of the dispersion by the prism, dispersion by the prism. So in the concept we discussed that whenever a white light will be incidenting on the a white light will be incidenting on the given a prism a white light will be incidenting on the given a prism that a white light will be split into seven different colors such a phenomena we called as a word dispersion of the light. So whenever the light will be undergoing the phenomena of the dispersion of the light so we will get different colors of the light we will get what different colors of the light so this color band we are called calling as a what spectrum of the light that a color band what we get from the given a prism is called as a what spectrum of the light so this is the first natural phenomena that what we observed in our daily life whenever the light was incidenting on the glass refracting surfaces so that is the first phenomena second one is a what blue of the sky or bluishness of the sky, bluishness of the sky. Generally, we will know that. So, whenever we are seeing towards the sky, the sky will be appears in the form of the bluish color. So, what is the reason? What is the reason behind the appearance of the sky in the bluish color only? So, the reason behind the appearance of the sky in the bluish color means what? That is nothing but scattering of the light, scattering of the light. So, what is the meaning of the scattering of the light? Whenever the light will be incidenting on a given obstacle, given a particle, the light will be undergoing the dispersion and these dispersed light rays are traveled in different directions. These dispersed light rays are traveling in different directions. Such a phenomena we are calling as a what? Scattering of the light. So that whenever the light will be passing through the atmosphere, that light will be incidenting on different dust particles as well as different water droplets. So that as a result, the light will be undergoing a what? Scattering. As a result, the blue color light will be getting more scattered. The blue color light will be getting more scattered towards the sky because of that reason. Because of that reason, we felt that the sky will be appears in the form of the bluish color. The similar phenomena will be takes place over the case of the the sea water will be appears in the form of a blue color so the reason behind the appearance of the sea water in the blue color is also what scattering of the light so the second natural phenomena that what we observed daily with the help of the light means a what bluishness of the sky and the third one is a what white color clouds white color clouds so, what is the reason behind the appearance of the clouds in the form of the white color means what? Whenever the light will be incidenting on the clouds, the clouds undergoing a what? Different reflections or the light will be undergoing the total internal reflection within the clouds. As a result, these clouds will be appears in the form of the white color. And the fourth one is a what? Reddishness of the sun, reddishness of the sun that will be appears either in sunrise or sunset. Already that concept we discussed. Why the sun will be appears in the form of the reddish color at the early sunrise or at the sunset means due to the scattering of the light, due to the scattering of the light. That is also another natural phenomena that what we observe in our daily life. And the fifth one is our rainbow. So rainbow is also one of the natural phenomena that what we observed on the rainy day. So these are the different natural phenomena that was produced by the given sunlight that what we observed in our daily life. So this is our basic information about some natural phenomena of the sunlight. 
in our syllabus we have two natural phenomena so one of them is a what rainbow second one is a what a scattering of the light that a scattering of the light concept was a removed so that now we are going to discuss the rainbow concept rainbow concept here, the first natural phenomena according to our NCRT syllabus is what a rainbow. Okay, rainbow. Now we will see what is the rainbow. What is the rainbow? A rainbow is a nothing but a color band. A rainbow is a nothing but what a color band. Already we told a color band is also calling as a what spectrum of the light. So that what is the rainbow? A rainbow is a rainbow is a color band. Rainbow is nothing but a what a color band. And what is the phenomena involved in forming the rainbow is due to the dispersion of the light. Due to the dispersion of the light, the rainbow will be formed. So that whenever the sunlight will be incidenting on the water droplet, whenever the sunlight will be incidenting on the water droplet, these sunlight are undergoing the phenomena of the dispersion of the light. As a result, the rainbow will be formed. So that what is the reason behind the formation of the rainbow means? So the rainbow will be formed, the rainbow is uh, formed due to the due to the dispersion of the light. Due to the dispersion of the light. So that whenever the incidental light will be incidenting on the water droplet, that a light will be undergoing the phenomena of dispersion of the light. As a result, we find the rainbow. Okay, next. Is there any another conditions are needed to observe the rainbow means? Yes, some of the basic conditions are needed. So, what are those conditions? So, in that the first one is the sun will be on the western side. Sun will be on which side? The sun will be on the western side and the rain will be falling on the eastern side. So, what is the condition is required to observe the rainbow means of what? The sun will be. So, what are the conditions are needed? The conditions are needed. What is the first condition? Sun will be on the the sun will be on the western side. Sun will be on which side? Western side. And the rain will be falling towards the eastern side. Sun will be present in which side? Western side. And the rain will be falling on the eastern side. And if you are observing the rainbow means, if you are observing the rainbow, either your face is facing the eastern side either your face is facing the eastern side or your back will be facing the sun then only you find the rainbow so another condition is a what whenever you are facing towards the eastern side or your back will be facing the western side then only we will find the rainbow so what is the third condition is needed the observer the observer back is facing the sun so what is the third condition is required so the observer back will be facing the sun then only we will find the rainbow so these are the conditions are needed to observe the rainbow what is the first condition the sun will be towards the what western side and the rain will be falling towards eastern side and the back of the observer will be facing the sun then only we will find the rainbow so, this is the reason behind the formation of the rainbow. So, what is the rainbow here? This is the color band and which is a format due to the dispersion of the light whenever the light is incidenting on the water droplets and what are the conditions are required means the sun will be on the western side, rain will be falling on the eastern side and the observer back was facing the sun and coming to types of the rainbow, types of the rainbow. So, how many types of rainbows are existing in the nature means there are two types of rainbows are there. The first rainbow we are calling as a what? Primary rainbow. What is the first rainbow? Primary rainbow. So, how the primary rainbow will be formed means suppose here I consider the water droplet. So, one water droplet we assume. So, onto this water droplet, onto this water droplet, 
whenever the sunlight rays are incident whenever the sunlight rays are incident already we told due to which phenomena the rainbow will be formed due to the dispersion of the light so that whenever the sunlight will be incidenting on the water droplet whenever the sunlight will be incidenting on the water droplet the light will be undergoing the dispersion the light will be undergoing the dispersion what is the meaning of the dispersion the white light was split into different colors so this is the red color this is the violet color so whenever the light rays are undergoing the phenomena of the dispersion and these light rays these light rays means what different colored light rays different colored light rays are incidenting on the are incidenting on the another inner surface of the water droplet so this is the first inner surface of the water droplet this is the second inner surface of the water droplet whenever these light rays are incident on the inner surface of the water droplet on the outer side so these are light rays are undergoing the phenomena of total internal reflection so here which phenomena will be takes place here total internal reflection so the first phenomena what what was that takes place here here dispersion of the light or the light will be undergoing the refraction phenomena and whenever these are different color light rays are incidenting on this inner surface they must be uh, they must be undergoing the phenomena of the total internal reflection then only you will get the rainbow so these are totally internal reflected light rays are again incident on the the front surface of the water droplet again incident on the front the surface of the water droplet again here again the light rays are undergoing the phenomena of the refraction so this is the first refraction this is the second refraction so that whenever the light rays are undergoing the phenomena of the refraction at the front surface of the at the front surface of the water droplet these the light rays are coming towards the observer these the light rays are coming towards the observer so the observer will be finding the rainbow the observer will be finding the rainbow so whenever you see the diagram towards the observer so this a violet color light will be on the inner side and this a red color light will be on the outer side so that in the case of the primary rainbow in the case of the so that in the case of the primary rainbow in the case of the primary rainbow like this the rainbow will be forming rainbow will be forming in the case of the primary rainbow the outermost color is a nothing but a red color the outermost color is nothing but red color and the inner innermost color will be the violet color violet color like this the primary rainbow will be forming once again see here whenever the light will be incident on the first surface or the front surface of the water droplet here the first refraction was a takes place first refraction was takes place so whenever the light will be incidenting on the water droplet and one more phenomena was a takes place that is nothing but what dispersion of the light these are dispersed different color light rays are incidenting on the incidenting on the inner surface of the inner surface of the water droplet as we shown in the figure there the light will be again undergoing the phenomena of the total internal reflection as a result these incident light rays are reflected back onto the same medium that is water droplet medium again these light rays are incidenting on the front surface of the water droplet again so these are the outcoming light rays or the emergent light rays so these emergent light rays only giving the rainbow so whenever the observer will be facing the eastern side so he will be finding the rainbow he will be finding the rainbow towards the observer which color will be present violet color will be present and away from the observer which color was present red color so that in the case of the primary rainbow the outermost color will be outermost color will be the red color and innermost color will be the violet color so this is the formation of the this is the formation of the primary rainbow now coming to the secondary rainbow coming to the secondary rainbow in the case of the first rainbow the light rays will be undergoing the refraction by twice refraction by twice and one total internal reflection one total internal reflection but in the case of the secondary rainbow see here 
so this is a sunlight which is incidenting on the water droplet sunlight which is incidenting on the water droplet so here whenever the sunlight will be incidenting on the water droplet again here which which phenomena will be takes place here dispersion of the light will be takes place dispersion of the light will be takes place again these are dispersal light rays are incidenting on the inner surface of the water droplet as a result first total internal reflection will be takes place first total internal reflection will be takes place since the light rays are undergoing the phenomena of the total internal reflection all the light rays are again incidenting on the inner surface of the water droplet again from this diagram here second total internal reflection will be takes place second total internal reflection will be takes place in the case of the primary rainbow only one total internal reflection will be takes place but in the case of the secondary rainbow two types of total internal reflection will be takes place and the final outcoming light rays will be final outcoming light rays will be existing like this since the red color light will be less deviated and violet color will be getting what more deviation so that in the case of the in the case of the secondary rainbow secondary rainbow violet color will be at the outer side violet color will be at the outer side and the red color will be at the inner side and with respect to the primary rainbow with respect to the primary rainbow the intensity of or the appearance of the secondary rainbow will be fainter the appearance of the secondary rainbow will be what fainter why it will be appears like a fainter with a less intensity means already we know that whenever the light will be undergoing the phenomena of the reflection some of the intensity of the light will be loses some of the intensity of the light will be loses so in the case of the primary rainbow only one total internal reflection will be takes place but in the case of the secondary rainbow in the case of the secondary rainbow here two types of total internal reflection will be takes place or the light undergoes the twice the total internal reflection as a result at each and every total internal reflection the light will be loses some of its intensity as a result the secondary rainbow will be appears as fainter with respect to the primary rainbow so this is the concept of the rainbow okay the next topic is what optical instruments optical instruments so what are the optical instruments and what is the need of the optical instruments means so optical instruments are the devices optical instruments are the devices they will be assisting the eye they will be assisting the eye to see the objects very clearly to see the objects whether it is a near object or far objects to see those objects by very clearly for that purpose we are using the instrument they will be calling as a what optical instruments and how many types of optical instruments are there these optical instruments are mainly classified into three different categories those are the first one is a what visual instruments visual instruments so what are the examples of the visual instruments means what telescope telescope as well as a microscope microscope so this a telescope as well as a microscope will be the examples for the visual instruments and the second category is the what the second category of optical instruments means what this is photographic photographic and producing instruments photographic and producing instruments so what are the examples of the photographic and the producing instruments means what cameras cameras and video recorders cameras as well as video recorders these are the examples of the photographic and producing instruments and the third one is a what analyzing analyzing and measuring instruments analyzing and measuring instruments the example for this a what spectrometer the example for this is a what spectrometer so what is a spectrometer and where we are using the spectrometer means spectrometer will be in generally they are using the spectrography or in researching field they are using these spectrometers 
and these are cameras and video recorders cameras and video recorders in generally we are using the cameras to take the photographs and the video records are using what to shoot the videos there also we are using a what optical instruments next the first one is about visual instruments visual instruments visual means what for seeing the objects so they are calling as a what telescope as well as the microscope in these a telescope as well as the microscope in these a telescope as well as microscope two types of lenses are there so those lenses are calling as a what objective lens objective lens and the second one is a what eye lens the microscope as well as the telescope will be consisting of two types of lenses one of the lenses we are calling as a what objective lens and the another lens is we are calling as a what eye lens what is the objective lens the lens which is a facing towards the object the lens which is a facing towards the object will be calling as the what objective lens how can we are defining the objective lens the lens which is a facing towards the object such a type of lenses we are calling as a what objective lenses and what is the meaning of the eye lens the lens which is a closer to the eye the lens which is a closer to the eye that lens we are calling as a what eye lens that lens we are calling as a what eye lens and in the case of the either a microscope or a telescope we are we are using the combination of the lenses we does not use the single lens why we are not using the single lens means whenever you are using the single lens and with the help of that single lens if you take the photograph some of the aberrations are there some of the defects are there while formation of the images so that to reducing the aberrations to reducing the defects in formation of the images we are using the combination of the lenses combination of the lenses so that in the case of either objective lenses or eye lenses we can't use the single lens we are using the multiple lenses for increasing the quality of the photos for increasing the quality of the photos and also we are using to reducing the aberrations for that purpose in the case of the objective lens as well as the eye lens we are using the combination of the lenses and what is the what is the role of the objective lens means the role of the objective lens means it will be increasing the field of view it will be increasing a what field of view so by using the objective lenses if you are using the heavy lenses more lenses the field of view will be more so that the role of the objective lens is a what it will be increasing the it will be increasing the field of view and what is the role of the eye lens means the eye lens will be acting as a magnifier the eye lens will be acting as a magnifier what is the meaning of the magnifier or magnification it will be increasing the it will be increasing the the size of the object or the size of the images it will be increasing the size of the object as well as the image so that the eye lens will be acting as a magnifier the eye lens will be acting as a magnifier so this is the introduction part of the optical instruments how many types we have three types in our in our syllabus only the first part will be there that is nothing but what visual instruments so it is consisting of what telescope as well as microscope in the telescope as well as a microscope how many types of lenses are there two type of lenses are there one of the lenses is called what objective lens which is a facing towards the object and the lens which is a closer to the eye that lens we are calling as a what eye lens it is also acting as a magnifier magnifier and the objective lens will be doing a what it will be increasing the field of view now we are going to discuss the concept of the human eye human eye see the next concept the human eye i think this concept is uh, to you in a biology so there you studied in detail so here also we have a small amount of the information about the human eye so in this human eye different portions are there different parts are there we will see what are the different parts they given according to our ncert test book see here the front spherical surface or the front curved surface of the human eye will be calling as a what a cornea so it is a front curved surface 
front curved surface that a front curved surface will be calling as a what cornea and this region will be there like a slit that will be calling as the iris of the eye this is a what it is acting like a slit so that a portion we are calling as a what iris and the central portion of the iris the central portion of the iris we are calling as a what a pupil so what is a pupil the central portion of central portion of the iris this is central portion we are calling as a what pupil and this a fluid medium will be there this a fluid medium will be acting as a crystalline lens a crystalline lens so already we know that the definition of the lens so what happens in the lens whenever the light will be incident on the lens that uh, light rays are undergoing the refraction so that whatever the light rays are incident on that pupil that line that light rays are passing through the crystal line and they will be forming the image on the retina so what is the use of the retina means whatever the objects we are seeing with the human eye so that objects corresponding images will be formed on the retina and this retina will be connected to the optic nerve this retina will be connected to the optic nerve so this is a simple description of the human eye according to our ncrt physics portion now we are going to explain the description part so how the image will be formed okay over the given retina see one of the object from that object from that object the light rays are coming outwards from that object the light rays are coming outwards whatever the light rays are which are coming outwards from the given respective object these light rays are initially incident where means these light rays are initially incident on the spherical portion or a curved portion of the eye that is nothing but a cornea so where the incident rays are light rays are first incident the incident light rays which are coming from the object are initially incident on the cornea so that the first point is the incident light rays are the incident rays are incident incident on the curved portion curved portion called as called as cornea called as a what cornea so whenever these incident light rays are incident on the curved portion that we are what we are calling as the cornea these light rays are passing through the cornea and they will be passing through the pupil of the eye which is the central portion of the iris so whatever the light rays they will be incidenting on the cornea these light rays are passing through what these light rays are passing through the pupil which is the central portion of the which is the central portion of the what iris central portion of the what iris next here the size of the pupil will be the size of the pupil will be changes which is a controlled by the controlled muscles so here the second point is a what the size of the pupil the size of the pupil will be changes will be changes by the by the controlled muscles by the controlled muscles so it will be automatically adjusting the size of the pupil according to what type of object we are seeing so that whenever the light rays are incidenting on the pupil according to that incidental light rays the size of the pupil will be altered by the controlled muscles automatically and this light rays are again incidenting on the crystal line lens so this entire portion so what is that a cornea iris a pupil and a crystalline lens this entire portion we are assuming as it is equivalent to the convex lens so whatever the fluid medium will be there iris pupil cornea all these a portion we are assuming as a what convex lens so that that a liquid portion will be acting as a 
convex lens. So whenever the light rays are incidenting on the convex lens, they need to form the image. Where the image will be formed, the corresponding image will be formed on the retina. So whatever the object we are seeing with the help of the eye lens, with the help of the eye lens, that a corresponding image will be formed by the eye lens, formed by the eye lens, on where the image will be formed on the retina only. Retina only. Whenever the corresponding image will be formed on the retina only, you will see the object by very clearly. Suppose the corresponding uh, image will be formed in front of the retina. Suppose the image formed by the islands will be formed where? In front of the retina, we can't see the object by clearly. If the corresponding image will be formed behind the retina also, we can't see the image by very clearly. So that when we will see the object by very clearly means whatever the image that is formed by the islands, whatever the image that is formed by the islands that should be formed on the retina only then only we will find the clear image then only we will see the object very clearly so that always the image formed by the islands must be formed on the retina only and what is the role of the retina this retina will be sending the electrical signals this retina will be sending the electrical signals to the brain, electrical signals to the brain with the help of the optical nerve, with the help of the optical nerve. So what is the role of the retina? Whenever you saw the object, whenever you saw the object, that information will be sent from retina to the brain, retina to the brain with the help of the optic nerve. So this is a mechanism that is going on the in viewing the object with the help of the human eye, human eye. So, in the case of the eye, already we told that a spherical front surface will be there that is calling as a what? Cornea. So that the size or shape, the shape and focal length of the, the shape and focal length of the eye lens, the shape and focal length of the eye lens will be adjusted by the the shape and focal length of the islands will be adju adjusted by the ciliary muscles ciliary muscles ciliary muscles suppose whenever you are seeing the very distant object very distant object in that case the focal length of the islands will be one particular value whenever we are seeing the closest objects whenever we are seeing the objects which are very closer to the eye at that instant the focal length of the islands value will be different that means depending upon which type of object you are seeing either you are seeing the distant object or closer object depending upon that the focal length of the islands will be changing depending upon that the focal length of the islands will be changes so according to that our convenient according to our convenient the focal length of the islands value will be changes by whom ciliary muscles ciliary muscles and already we told that where the image will be formed the image will be formed on the retina so that whatever the image that is produced by the islands its nature will be its nature will be real inverted and diminished in size so already we told the islands will be equivalent to the islands will be equivalent to what convex lens so that always the convex lenses are forming the images which type of images real images inverted and diminished in size and another point is a what the size of the image the size of the image which is the formed on the retina the size of the image which is the formed on the retina will be equivalent to will be equivalent to angle subtended by the object angle subtended by the object at the islands islands okay so what is that the size of the image which is a formed on the the size of the image which is a formed on the retina that value will be equivalent to what the angle made by the object with respect to the islands the angle made by the object with respect to the islands so that the size of the image is equal to angle made by the object angle made by the object at i at 
I. So that angle is also calling as a what? Visual angle. So what is the visual angle definition? The angle made by the object, the angle made by the object with respect to the I will be calling as a what? Visual angle. So here, visual angle value will be very small. The size of the image is also very small. If the visual angle will be very small, the size of the image is also what? Very small. If you want to make the bigger images, if you want to see the image will be in the bigger in size, we have to increase the, we have to increase the visual angle. So what you told, whatever the image that is produced by the islands, whatever the image that is produced by the islands, its size value will be equivalent to, its size value will be equivalent to angle made by the object at the eye, angle made by the object at the eye, that angle we are calling as a visual angle. So how can we measure the visual angle? Suppose we are assuming that it is the eye, with the help of the eye, we are seeing the distant object, we are seeing the distant object. So this a distant object will be making some angle with respect to the eye. So here theta will be calling as theta will be calling as a what visual angle visual angle. So for the small angles so sin theta value is equal to tan theta from this diagram I am writing that tan theta is equal to what h by u. So where u is indicating what object distance. So if a theta will be small so that tan theta value is equal to theta. So therefore theta is equal to what h by u h by u. So whenever the object will be at the longer distances whenever the object will be at the longer distances this a theta value will be very small theta value will be very small. So whenever the object becomes to closer, whenever the object becomes to be closer, the theta value will be increases. Whenever the theta value will be increases, the size of the image is also increases. Size of the image is also increases. So that from this what we have to confirm that to increase the, to increase the size of the image, to increase the size of the image, we must increase the, we must increase the visual angle, visual angle. So for this purpose only, for this purpose only, to increasing the visual angle, to increasing the visual angle, we are using the optical instruments. We are using a what? Optical instruments. In generally, we are seeing the objects which are at a very long distances. Next concept defects of vision defects of vision so what is the defects of the vision means just now only we told two points so one is called what far point and there one is a what near point what is the meaning of the far point suppose our eye will be said to be very healthy so our eye will be able to detect the objects see the objects even though they will be placed at very long distances very long distances for the healthy eye that I will be detecting the objects even though they will be placed at very long distances or at infinite distances that a point we are calling as a what far point far point for the healthy eye for the healthy eye the far point value will be the far point value will be infinity. What is the meaning of the infinity means now? That means what? Not the infinite distance, a very long distance. So if the eye will be said to be very healthy, we see the objects which are placed at very long distances. That a point we are calling as a what? Far point. In generally for the far point, while we are solving the numericals, the far point value we are taking as infinity. Next. Second point is called what? Near point. Near point. So what is the near point and how can we choose the near point value? Suppose if any one of the object will be placed very closer to your eye, we can't see the object by very clearly. To see the object, the object will be placed at some minimum distance. Minimum distance. So the minimum distance at which the object will be placed to see it by very clearly with the human eye it will be calling as a what? Near point. So for the healthy eye, the near point value is equal to 25 centimeter. For the healthy eye, the near point value is equal to what? 25 centimeter. That means what? The object will be placed minimum at a distance of 
25 cm from the eye then only you see the object very clearly otherwise if you place a 10 cm we can't see the object by very clearly we will see the object but we can't see it by very clearly so that what is the near point value for the healthy eye will be what 25 cm now so how many types of defects of visions are there means what there are four types are there the first one is what myopia myopia so what is the myopia and what is happening in this case means what already we told in the case of the islands in the case of the islands if the image will be formed if the image will be formed on the retina if the image will be formed on the retina then only our eye will be detecting the objects by very clearly once again whenever the image formed by the islands that will be formed on the retina exactly then only we see the objects by very clearly otherwise our eye should not be detecting the object by clearly what is the myopia means in the case of the myopia if the eye will be suffering with the myopia the islands should not be forming the image the islands should not be forming the image exactly on the retina exactly on the retina so the myopic eye will be forming the image in front of the retina only if any one of the eye will be suffering with the if any one of the eye will be suffering with the myopia that eye will be forming its images in front of the retina only as a result that a person is not able to see the objects by very clearly so how to rectify the myopia to rectify the myopia defect which type of lens we are placing in front of the eye lens means we are placing which type of lens concave lens so whenever you are placing the concave lens the image in this case will be formed exactly on the retina so this is the first defect in the defects of the vision so by we, by using which type of lenses we are rectifying this myopia concave lens what is the myopia the myopic eye will be forming the image in front of the retina to rectify it we are using which type of lens concave lens second one hypermetropia hypermetropia so what is the hypermetropia in the case of the hypermetropia the image will be formed behind the retina in the case of the myopia where the image will be formed the image will be formed in front of the retina as a result the eye should not be detecting the objects so in the case of the hypermetropia in the case of the hypermetropia the actual image that is formed by the eye lens will be formed behind the retina so that to reduce this to rectify this hypermetropia which type of lens we are placing in front of the eye lens means we are placing the convex lenses we are placing a what convex lenses in front of the eye lens to to reducing the hypermetropia so this is the second defect of vision in the case of the human eye first one is about myopia and the second one is about hypermetropia and the third one is about astigmatism third one is about astigmatism so if any one of the person is suffering with the defect of astigmatism so the shape of the cylindrical portion of the eye the shape of the cylindrical portion of the eye what we told the cornea the shape of the cylindrical portion of the eye will be changes as a result that a person was not able to detecting the objects by very clearly using the cylindrical lenses by using the cylindrical lenses we will reduce we will rectify the astigmatism defect so these are the different types of the defects of the vision first one is about a myopia which can be which can be rectified by using the concave lenses second one is about hypermetropia that can be rectified with the help of the convex lenses the third one is about astigmatism which can be reduced with the help of the cylindrical lenses so this is a what you are a human eye and a defects of vision in the next class we are going to discuss simple microscope as well as the compound microscope